Swiss novelist that you uh, were inspired by. But I, I was wondering if there's anything more that you can say about how you thought about constructing the sentence and the each the, the, sen the sentences and sort of the arc that you used through them. I mean, there seemed to me to be an emotional arc. There was a downbeat at the beginning, and then there was like some kind of an arc that went up and then sort of down in sort of stream of consciousness or whatever. And I was wondering if you could say a little more about how you thought about that. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I can certainly try. Uh, I'm, I've, I've always been um, interested in what sentences can do. And, uh, and I think Chris Fishbach can attest to that. Um, having this poor fellow, can you imagine? He had to read this thing and, and make sure that these things tracked in some way. Um, <laughs> I still haven't paid him back for doing such an amazing job in, in editing the thing. Um, but at any rate, I've always been interested in tenses, and they seem like extraordinarily elastic mechanisms, right? You can do all kinds of things with a sentence, and we tend to do just a very little bit with the sentence, in, you know, for practical reasons, I suppose, um, largely, uh, you know, in our you know, spoken, spoken language and in written language. Um, but it's, you know, it's amazing how much you can work into a sentence, uh, and that they are kind of dramatic devices in a way. You know, you can have, as you put it, sort of a, a downbeat and then something that the rising sense of energy within a sentence. And there's can be all kinds of suspense. Where's the sentence going? What's the sort of the money and the simile, or whatever it is that you're working with? Um, and so this idea where you know I've used long sentences in other books. Um, but what happens if, if you push it, and how far can this thing go? So it's really pretty exciting for me to work with this um, thing that we've been gifted with, that uh, there isn't any particular reason except convention, I, I suppose, um, and the constraints of, uh, of understandability. Um, with, with sentences. But we can, you know, we really can do quite a bit more than we tend to with these things. And I wanted, you know, I, I liked this idea that you could, only, you could have um, uh, you could do all the work of a chapter, you could do all the work of, in some senses, a, a short story, like a short short with, with a sentence, and then it was powerful enough to, to um, house all of that. Uh, and of course, you know, the, uh, at a certain juncture, well, I want these people to talk to each other, so how do I do that? So there's some, you know, there's some fudgets, but I, I, I was hoping that they were interesting fudgets. Uh, uh, within this, this mechanism of the sentences, and also that by the time the reader had gotten to those passages of dialogue, which should, you know, uh, in, in, a, in a slightly uh, less torqued universe, should have been scored with question marks and and uh, and periods, and etc. And, and um, that that the reader would at that juncture go with me. That perhaps. Um, it was our at this this point for grammar to break down the rules to break down, um, but I also so, you know someone um, the poet Anne Lauterbach uh, made the comment to me um, about this thing that I was doing that, that that what these sentences struck her as were sort of like the buttresses on a cathedral um, that were carrying a tremendous amount of weight or helping support a tremendous amount of, of weight uh, and uh, had their own shape. Um, and yet they were they were holding this this larger thing that the you know, doing the work of carrying the overall story the overall structure of, of the, the book and, I, and and that's been a really interesting way for me to think about it that they were um, their own entities but they were constantly serving the uh, the larger structure of, of the novel and a larger sense of, of the story that it was telling and that they would be interwoven again with that idea of someone who's trapped in a sentence um, and just in the way that uh, one who is trapped in uh, sorrow, um, in loss, etc. Um, and you're trapped and it goes on and on and then it stops and there's a sort of ah, and I imagine that you know, for those of you who read the book there was a kind of whew, okay, all right, got that sentence, cross that sentence up, oh my God, here comes another one. Um, in, in the same way that another wave of sorrow can break over you. So I wanted the sentences to um, aid and abet these sort of the larger thematics of, of the book, um, uh, and yet you know their book ends, and you know maybe that speaks to that earlier question. You know, there is an end to the book, and there, maybe there is an end 
or some amelioration of, of this this uh, character's um, sorrow. Uh, so they, they were it was really a delight. I, I would sit down in an evening, and I would say, Here, you know, I would have this idea that I, I had gotten the night before. This is the sentence I'm going to write. This is the one I'm going to work on. Um, and I thought of them that way. I didn't say chapters to myself. Uh, and I would write the sentence, and then I would write just a little bit of the next day's, the next evening's sentence. And this went on for about six weeks, most evenings. Um, I would sit in the back room and, with the laptop and, and, and type these things. And, and so, you know, it was fun for me to sort of announce uh, that, okay, yeah, no, that's, a, that's another sentence that I finished. Uh, and part of the delight of the process for this book, which is totally unlike any other book that I've written, is that um, even though, again, as, as uh, Chris can attest that there was certainly work to be done. There wasn't a dramatic reinvention that had to occur. They kind of came out. So once I had hit a stride, I was able to run with this exploration of, of these sentences.